Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over one of the most basic operations inside Shopify, how to add a page. So let's jump into it. So today I'm going to go over something uh, relatively basic but super important when working on your Shopify store. Your pages and how to edit them and how to add them. Now pages are more useful than just simply adding content to your site. They can also be used to store specific content blocks, used in drop down menus, they can be included anywhere within your template and we'll go into that in a little bit. But first let's jump over to the dashboard and show you how to create a page. So if we go to our dashboard and we click on the online store button on the left hand side, it's going to open up a menu and then we can go to pages. So now under pages, you're going to have a couple of default pages that get added to your store when you set it up. The two are going to be about us and home page. Now if you want to go and add another page, you can click on add a page in the right hand corner and it will allow you to add the content for your page. Now the first thing that comes up is your title. So the title, this is the title of your page. Now in this example, we're actually going to use uh, the word sizing chart so that we can include this content on a subsequent uh, product page so that if we are going to make changes, we can cha make the changes in one spot and then it will reflect across the entire website instead of having to go and add it to individual blocks on each page inside the description text. So let's go in here and add a sizing chart. Okay, um, and we're gonna put in here, uh, please use the following chart for sizing. And we are going to add, I'm gonna grab a sizing chart from Google here. Okay, so I've gone and grabbed a sizing chart from Google Images, um, but before I go through that, I just want to go through what the, all the buttons do on the content area, just in case you've never seen them before. So the first line of the content area is for text formatting. It's for design, for modifying the text so that you have some presets that are going to add HTML code to it. So the first menu is going to have your paragraph and your heading text. So if we wanted to change this into a heading number one, we can go and select it and select number one. Now it's important to keep in mind that depending on which theme you're using and what your, uh, your coding is like, this might change. So you might be able to select heading one and the CSS styles would change your heading to be smaller than heading two. So it's super important that you keep a consistent style guide when choosing these headings, especially if you're building the site for somebody else you want to make sure that it's easy for them to understand when they select heading one, they're going to get the biggest heading. So we're going to keep this on paragraph for now, but I just want to show you, you have paragraph, heading, and then block quotes. Block quotes essentially give it an indent um, and it gives it a piece of tag around it so that you can say that it's set up to be a, uh, a call out of sorts. The next items you have, uh, we have bold, italics, and underlines. These have been around for a while, so they're pretty understandable. And then we have our bulleted list. We have bulleted list, numbered list, and then indenting and outdenting. So if you wanted to indent something in, you could do that. And if you wanted to pull it back, you could do that as well. Then you have your alignment, your alignment being left, center, and right. And then finally, the text color. Now, I don't recommend using text color inside of the content block on side pages. I would much rather recommend saying that you create a style for that um, and then apply that style. Um, in certain situations, it may be all right that you go and change the color of a, of a text, but only if it's at the very, very end of, a, uh, of the structure of your styling. Um, and there is no other option. So um, I would avoid using text coloring here and, and more fall towards using a CSS style sheet in order to change the color. Next we have link, then we have a table, we can insert a table. We have images, video, and then clear formatting. So we're going to go insert image. We click on image and it's gonna come up with a bunch of sample images that we've put together. Um, we're gonna go and actually upload a new one. So we're gonna hit upload and we're going to go to that size chart that we found here. We're gonna upload the size chart. Now once the image has uploaded, it's gonna show you it in a preview here, um, and then you can select the size. 
So we want it to be a relatively large size. We're going to say 1024 by 1024. And then we want to give it some image alt text. Now image alt text have been used for a number of pieces throughout the years within the life of Shopify. Um, as it stands right now, they're used primarily for SEO purposes. Uh, in the past, if you have an older store, sometimes the image alt text was used for variant swapping. So when you selected uh, red, it would change the image to red depending on what the alt tag was selected for, um, or would change it to blue, and so on and so forth. That really depends on what your developer has told you. Now, if you have coded something up specially to work in the image tags, you already understand this. Uh, but if your developer has said you need to select the alt tag to be X, Y, and Z so that the whole application works, it's important that you follow those instructions. For me, it's not that important because we haven't built anything that's more complex into the alt tags. So I'm going to go and just put in sizing chart. Okay, once we've inserted it, now we can see, um, if we click in the, in the spot here, it will auto open for us, um, and we can see all of the information in there. All right, so now we've gone and created the content. Now the one button that I skipped over when we were talking about the content space is the show HTML button. So if you click on the show HTML button, it's going to flip it over to HTML. It's going to clear out all of the buttons that are along the top. Um, so if you're wondering where your buttons have gone, it's because you click that button. It's clicking it again will bring them back, not to worry. Sometimes switching over into the HTML is necessary because we're doing web development here. So we might need access to the code in order for something to render properly. All right, um, then coming down, we have our SEO settings. So if we hit edit web SEO settings, this is where we are going to be able to change the SEO for our site. If we want to improve the keywords, if we want to improve the description for the specific page, this is where we would change it. Also, this is where we would change our URL and handle. I've done another video on handles and what they mean and what they're used for, as well as I've done another video on SEO. So go check that out if you're wondering about how this all works down here. All right two more sections that we want to uh, click on. So we have visibility, so this will um, allow us to make the page visible on the website, um, or we can have it hidden, and we can set a specific publish date if we want to uh, have this all automated for us, that it shows up on a specific date. Say, for example, if we wanted um, this sizing chart only to show up once a product got posted. For the most part, um, I actually don't utilize the publish date as much as you probably could, um, but it is available there if you need it. So make sure it's set to visible so it shows up on your site. And then finally, templates. Templates are different coding base plates for your website so or for your, your page template. You can have multiple page templates. Um, I go into a little bit more detail on how templates work in another video. You can go check that out. Um, but for the basics of this demo, because we're just talking about basic page stuff, we're just going to select the default page that it comes with, which is page. And then I'm going to hit save. All right, now that it's gone and created the page for us, we can actually go and view it. So let's go hit view. And we can see the sizing chart has now come up on our site. So now if we wanted to add a navigation item to a product page um, that points to the sizing chart, we now have a page created so that we can go and do that. Thanks for coming by. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, hit the bell notification if that's something you're into, and we'll see you guys in the next one.